Uh, brilliant. An absolute pleasure to see you. Charlie, thank you so much for your kindness there. And oh, the phones. You're live with Scotty's phone in, who's that? Thank you, it's Kareem Scotty. How Kareem, are we? Kareem, how lovely to hear you. Fantastic. Thank What's you. happening? I just seen that you were live there, so I thought oh, I could pop in and say a wee quick hello to Scotty. Well, that is very <laughs> kind of you. It, it is, as you know, it's always a random pop up. Yes, no, but. It keeps people on their toes. It's good to like around the pop-up. Keeps them going. And uh, the TikTok and YouTube channel are doing very well. YouTube's That's a little perfect. bit slow for subscribers. People are yes. lazy, I think. It's a lazy thing. Well, I've been watching some of your videos you've been uploading, and they have been absolutely fantastic from previous callers from your other radio stations. Oh, yes, yes. We came across one or two of these, and sometimes people email me them, you know. Yes, no, and you must have a big bank of them saved somewhere from over the years, Scotty. Most of them are actually, I think, on YouTube. There's about 3,000 videos on YouTube. People wow. don't quite realise just it's a vast depository of broadcasting yes. history, you know. Oh, well, listen, it is history, and, you know, it's really interesting when you're, you're listening, and it's like politics at that time, or you've just yes. got some really funny calls. It's, it's, it's entertaining. A, bit of, a good bit of entertainment. There must have been something in it, Kareem, to get, as I say, quarter of a million people on a local station listening every half hour, you know? Oh, absolutely, Scotty. And, you know, it's, as I said, people learn from it. And, you know, I did, I, I had a good wee giggle. I, I had one where a guy came up and he was, he was just, it was various calls and various people. And you were just, you know, they were acting silly and you were just shooting them down. It was, it was really funny. <laughs> Sometimes we were just so mobbed. As I say, the record was 460,000 calls in one week. Wow. And that was the one that shorted out the network, and that's when the telephone company had to phone the station and find out what was going on because they had to strengthen <laughs> the network. You know? Well, you know, Scotty, those are the days, and those days, you know, just, just need to keep getting out there to the folk that, you know, the YouTube and the TikTok and the live calls, and, you know, it's... No, it's different types, but there's a different way of doing it. It's a different way of doing it, and uh, we'll see, and I think it will grow. I think because I don't have an advertising budget as such, uh -huh. uh, it's difficult to get it out there. But once people know, do you know what I mean? Oh, what the mouth, Scotty? I mean, how many times have you been on a live and someone will write, Scotty, oh, I didn't know you were back or whatever, you know? Yes, it's just yes, it's all a wee stuff, right? Word of mouth and good people are, gosh, we've got 50% of the goal already. And exactly. Susan says, hi, Kareem. Robert <laughs> says, bye. And mm -hmm. uh, Professor Numpteed says, Scotty, my pack of sausages were one shot. Who do I phone? Uh, Voice of Reason says, Dinky do, Scotty McClue. Uh, I'm from Motherwell. Thanks for entertaining me through the years. So yes. that's all right, isn't it? And there's the wonderful Alan McGee says, Hello, Scotty. <laughs> yes. Well, it was interesting. Hi, Susan. Sorry not to ignore you. I, I was in Edinburgh on Saturday there, and as you know, there was a massive... I've not really spoke much politics with you recently. No. This is the only thing I'm going to say politically, Scotty. Yes. It was the big independence walk, yes. uh, which was really pushed from the SNP, and there was an absolute fantastic turnout. It was a, it was really a beautiful day, as you know, the weekend was. Uh -huh. And they had Humza Yusuf and other MPs all walking down the the mile. The down, Royal down Mile. To, yes, to the offer seat down at the bottom of the Parliament is. Um and it was a fantastic day. Kids were there, families, elderly, and the tourists getting to see that. It was like an you know, with the bagpipes and the drums walking down and you know, it's just it was it was fantastic to see, um, and if anyone's listening, if they were there as well, I'm sure they they really enjoyed themselves. Oh yes, I think so. I mean, the, you want to have a lot of fun, but also there's a very very important message there that Scotland yeah. doesn't want to become a political football. It wants to go back to being a world leading nation. 
Well, I think the problem, Scotty, is the only issue that I had was Saturday, and I said that to one of my friends was there, and we, we left early because I thought, I don't want to listen to all the speeches because I support the walk, but when you were listening to the politicians and or First Minister, it was all Scotland needs, Scotland should, you must talk. And that to me is, is great motivational, and I don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. it was excellent for motivation and to get people determined. But the one thing that was lacking was you're telling us that we need to be doing X, Y, and Z, but you're not telling us how you are going to get this, this referendum. How are you going to ensure that we get this independent Scotland? Because I can talk about Scotty being a billionaire. That's not going to happen. No, it's, be- it's, it's, uh, what you have to do is actually say, here is the plan. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and here is the plan for the currency. Here is the plan for the monarchy. Here is what we're offering for the such and such and the such and such. If you're into all that, could I have your vote, please? Well, I know the SNP's stance on the monarchy is to leave it as it is. Yes. There, there's no plans to change that. And that the SNP have made that abundantly clear. We had somebody speaking from the Greens party that made it abundantly clear that they want a Republic Scotland. Well, I think they can forget that. So that's them just uh, literally, you know, setting themselves on fire. They can forget that, really, because yeah. that's not going to happen. You know, half a dozen people shouting, no, my king is very unappetizing. At the end of the day, Scott, as you know, I never used to be uh, supporting the monarchy or the royal family but I've listened to your shows over the years I've listened to your arguments and at the end of the day I don't have anything against them yeah. at all I think they're bringing a lot of money into the country in terms of tourism we've spoken about that before and one pound of your wages or your tax goes towards the royal family a year that's not even that's right. inflation just now but also Which, there's another figure Karim, that people don't realize 75 percent of the king's income goes back to the treasury to the people basically. yes yeah. to the people yeah. absolutely and to do yeah. up the palaces which are admin hqs you mm-hmm. know well, I, I don't have anything against, and I've always maintained that I think in an independent Scotland, you know, the monarchy will play a key part in, t- in terms of attract tourism. We have so many abandoned, run-down castles that could be refurbished. Yes. And, you know... In fact, I, I think so there much. should be reparations. If uh, national debt-wise, if Scotland yeah. became independent, I think Scotland would be owed something like, I think it's 60 billion mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now, uh, you know, Linlithgow Palace. Yes. And the First yeah. Minister could have a flat in that. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And we've got huge, I mean, they talk about, oh, these castles should go to the homeless. That would distress the homeless because people are homeless for a whole variety of reasons. Yeah. And they would get very distressed in a castle. I could tell you, you can get lost in these places and they're not particularly comfortable. But if they were yeah. properly done up, Linlithgow Palace is one. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a whole huge raft of places, you say, if they did them all up. And then yeah. uh, there are also council estates with very good, well-built housing all boarded up. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that needs to be looked at as well. Uh, those types of houses, Scotty, you know, they're, they're still going to be here yeah. after you and I disappear. Well, the 1920s, 1930s Scottish council house, two and three bedroom, four and a block, all that yeah. stuff, very, very well built, double skin brick. Yeah, yeah. They were made to last. If you look at new builds nowadays, Scotty, oh. God, they're not going to last 20 years. Well, you take a look at the likes of Moss Park. And uh-huh. Knightswood, and yeah. just see the quality of build that's in these houses. It's fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, if you know the south side of the city, like the same four in a block, if you know like the cross foot area where yes. you've got the cottage flats, yes. uh, they're solid. You know, yep. they're absolutely solid. Um, and, and, yeah, it's good. You don't get that nowadays, but, no. but you know, it's, 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 it's grand. 
<laughs> An all-round Clarkston.